I farmaci biologici svolgono un ruolo molto importante nella cura delle malattie infiammatorie croniche dell'intestino, specialmente delle forme più gravi. Facciamo il punto col dottor Ben Horim del centro che si occupa della cura di queste patologie situato nelle vicinanze di Tel Aviv a Israele e con lui parliamo proprio dell'ottimizzazione della terapia con i farmaci biologici. Dr. Ben Horin, what does it mean to optimize the biological treatment in IBD? Ecco, could you explain this to us? Well, I think uh, optimization of the biological therapy has uh, two main aspects. One of them is to, uh, once you start therapy, and I'm not going to talk about who, who do you start biologic therapy with, but once you do start the therapy, how do you get the maximum efficacy in terms of getting clinical remission, meaning that the patient is totally without any symptoms. So this is one big aspect of, of this, uh, of, uh, this uh, uh, optimization of therapy. Now the other aspect is uh, also the possibility that you may have or you may achieve clinical remission, yet the patient has a miserable life or, or suboptimal quality of life for, for various reasons. So these are two aspects that you have to think about, both the achieving clinical remission and maintaining it, and also looking at the quality of life. Many people uh, have a, a very good response with biological treatment, but there are who doesn't, who doesn't have it. So what to do, to do in uh, these primary non-responder patients? So as you correctly said, there are patients who do not respond, and we usually divide them to primary non-responders and secondary non-responders. Now primary non-responders are usually, uh, we estimate them between 10 to 40% of patients may not respond initially to the treatment at all. Not, they will not respond to the induction, uh, to the induction therapy. Uh, now, there is a big question on why is that, and there are some uh, data showing that the drug levels in those patients is, is good enough, so it's probably not a problem with pharmacokinetics, and it may be some other issues. There's very little data on showing, uh, showing what to do with this patient, actually only three small studies uh, with six patients in two of them and 18 patients in, in the last one. And, uh, and what they've shown is actually despite the fact that you might think not to to give another anti-TNF to someone who had primary uh, failure, actually up to 50% of them may respond to a second anti-TNF despite having a primary failure. So although this is a very small uh, number of patients uh, studied so far, it may still be reasonable to, to start a second anti-TNF despite a primary uh, failure with the first one. Um, you have spoken about the secondary non-responder. Who are and what to do in these cases? A secondary non-response is perhaps even a, a greater problem because uh, these are patients that once they get the therapy, you induce a good response or even clinical remission, but then along the course of time, you get a lower and lower uh, uh, rates of uh, response or people are flaring up, the patient are flaring up with re-emerging symptoms. And this can happen in up to, uh, uh, with the different drugs, can up to 30% uh, of patients within the first year and progressively more and more patients in the years thereafter. It was estimated to be around 13% annually per patient year for infliximab and up to 24% annually for adalimumab. So what to deal with them is, is a good question and usually it starts with understanding what is the cause of, of uh, loss of response. And the most important thing uh, I think is to first verify that it's indeed loss of response or, or symptoms that are related to inflammation due to uh, IBD and not due to other causes. Once you know it's inflammation due to IBD, you can increase or intensify the drug or change to another anti-TNF, whether you have immunogenicity issue or not. But it's very important to first verify that it's not a problem uh, with uh, another, uh, another cause causing the symptoms, for instance, infection, fibrostenotic stricture, or things that drugs have little to do with. Um, and last, uh, I would like to, to know uh, your comment about the impact of this drug in the, the quality of life of the patients. So uh, this is a very good question also. Uh, these drugs, uh, the biologics have done a tremendous revolution in terms of the quality of life of patients and I think uh, we see, a, uh, we see a, a, an improvement and this was also substantiated in, in research that the quality of life is much improved. However, we also have to pay attention to other issues in the quality of life, for instance, the duration of infusion and, and, and other uh, things that can impact our, uh, our patient's quality of life. For instance, even if a patient is in clinical remission, his quality of life may be uh, poor due to severe weakness. And if we don't pay attention to iron deficiency and, and resupplement his iron stores, he may be in clinical remission but still having weakness that uh, impedes his quality of life. So these are things that we have to think about uh, on the general health of, of our patient and not only in the terms of uh, clinical remission of his IBD by biologics, which is uh, very good indeed usually.
So you are not magic ballot by by themselves, but you have to look uh, to the patient uh, as a whole. I think they are an important tool, an important, uh, uh, an important tool in our arsenal. But surely, as you were just said correctly, they are our patient is a whole world. Each patient is a whole world, and we have to think about him uh, on, from all these aspects and all these angles, just to ensure that he has a general good health and, and a special quality of life.